Hi guys, now we're back with Sessions 21. We're going to talk today about medication administration, the five rights, knowing the right dose, injection sites, PCA administration, and immunosuppressive drugs, their uses and side effects. So let's get going. We know that what at every stage of the game, every nurse has to administer medication. The dep it depends on where you work, how much you give, but the important thing is knowing the five rights. The right patient, the right drug, the right dose, the right route. In other words, if it's supposed to be given IV, make sure you do not give it in the muscle because the effects can be devastating, the drugs like potassium and the right time. Here's this nurse saying, I always have trouble with knowing the right route. I guess it is not that important. That is not so. It is extremely important to know the right route. There are many medications, if given IV that's meant to be, let's say by mouth or so, can be very devastating or be given, let's say, in the muscle. So you must make sure you have the right route. Now here is Ali. She's saying, I say if they are the same color and size, chances are they're the same dose. Never make that mistake looking at the color of a pill and saying it's the same dose. The same pill, the same size, but it may not be the same dose. You have one tablet here that says one gram. You have one tablet here that says one milligram. It makes a big difference. We'll discuss that in a second. Then you have another tablet here that says 25 milligrams. And you have 250 milligrams, I take that back. And there's another one here that says 500 milligrams. And let's see the reason why. One gram, GM, as it's written for short, usually means a whole thousand milligrams. So if that nurse gave a one milligram, assuming it's the same as a gram, she has given that patient a very lethal dose, and you don't want to do that. In fact, what one milligram is equal to is 0 0.001 gram. So that's a very minute dose. 0.5 gram gives you 500 milligrams, 0.25 gram gives you 250 milligrams. So again, if you're not certain, take the trouble to find out, discuss it with your pharmacist or a nurse who's used to giving medications who can help you decide. Let's talk about injection sites. When injections are written to be given intramuscularly, usually it's written IM, it's usually given deep into the muscle, far deeper than just the fatty tissue. And typically the sites are usually that one there, the muscles up in your upper arm, it's given in the thigh muscles, these are deep, you can give it nice and deep with a sharp needle. Let's talk about when muscles, it's supposed to be given. You, another site you can use for intramuscular injection is the buttocks. Now you've got to be very careful because here's your spinal column. The problem is the sciatic nerve runs low down in that area. So you don't want to strike the sciatic nerve and cause that patient either temporary or permanent damage. So what you need to do, just do an imaginary cross in your mind across the buttock area and shoot for the upper outer quadrant to shy clear away from that nerve. And then you can stick deep into the buttocks without that fear of doing any damage to the sciatic nerve because I've seen it happen over the years. Next, we are going to talk about subcutaneous injections. And you know things like insulin is given in the subcutaneous tissue, which actually amounts to giving it into the fatty tissue under the skin. There are several sites. You have the arms. You can use the fatty tissue, the abdomen, the upper thighs, and there are many more, but those are enough for now. And, of course, if something is administered IV, Make sure you're supposed to, whether you're supposed to give it IV push or slow drip, like in a piggyback. Never just assume everything IV gets shoved and it does not work that way. Some IV solutions have to be very dilute, others less dilute, and some of them you follow with a push, depending on the site, whether you have an IV flowing in or it's just a straight push and then you flush it through with some normal saline. So take the trouble to find out what is the correct way to administer that medication, your institutions, policies, and procedures, of course. Next, we want to talk about PCA administration and to find, find out as much as you can about pain management and pain assessment. Please go to dearnurses.com. Patient, this patient is saying that she's happy that her sister came by and medicated her. That is not the way PCA works. A PCA is usually 
administered by the patient herself who can assess her pain level. You should advise your patients, if you have a patient who is on PCA, never to have anyone else push that button. Another thing is you should pay close attention to things like respiratory depression in these patients, their level of consciousness, because sometimes narcotics can cause respiratory depression, a decrease in level of consciousness. So always do an assessment, make sure that patient is breathing not very shallow, nice and easy, make sure the level of consciousness they can talk to you, they're awake, they're alert. Because I have had a patient who was on a PCA who was so lethargic, I could hardly wake her up to say a word. So do be sure that you take the time to find out what that patient's neurological status before you continue to give, uh, allow more and more medication. And of course, we have nowadays, because of all the transplantations that are done, like liver and so, we have a tremendous number of patients are taking what is called immunosuppressant drugs. Now, here is a patient who had uh, a liver transplant done, Mr. N. He has progressed very well, and he's now on the surgical floor. Doctor's doing his rounds, and he says, you know what? I hate taking pills. Well, he has been refusing his immunosuppression drugs like Prograf. What patient education was done? It's very important to let patients know that it is not a choice. Once they are on these drugs, they have to take them every day whether they like it or not because you can get signs of rejection. You have to take these pills without fail. These are intended for the rest of their lives. Some of the side effects of such drugs are hair loss, obesity, diabetes, gastrointestinal upset. So if you have a patient who is complaining of gastrointestinal upset, chances are it's associated with the medication and he may very readily say he does not want to take it because he doesn't feel good after taking it. So you may want to discuss it with the doctor if there's something else they can give to that patient to calm his stomach. But you should not, if you have patients on immunosuppressants, just pass it off as he does not feel like taking his medication. It's not a choice. So I hope you've learned something from this. Stay posted for more clinical issues. Have a nice day.